3D moon view. Thor, the god of thunder, is banished and sent to the worst place imaginable. New Jersey. No, wait. Earth. He is now mortal, and do note that he spends most of the movie like this. He does not use his godlike powers. Those are kind of like those of a god. Very much in this film. The mischievous Loki causes some other problems after learning a secret. When on Earth Thor meets up with two scientists and a college student. One of the scientists, played by Natalie Portman, is in really bad need of driving lessons. And they of course have a romance that is a mildly weak aspect of the film. This being done by Kenneth Branagh, I didn't know exactly what to expect or if I should really get my hopes up. I like the guy. I like some of what I've seen of what he's directed. But, you know, okay, so he does Shakespeare and then he goes on to do a comic book adaptation. I guess I should have figured this is actually quite Shakespearean. No, seriously. The core conflict is this family drama, and our villain is a bit of a tragic villain, actually. And this works remarkably well. The characters are a bit varied, and other than the likes of Loki, they tend not to be that memorable. This has to juggle both Asgard, where the gods live, and Earth, because there are things going on in both places, and, you know, Earth helps tie it into us. You know, if the whole thing just happened on Asgard, we wouldn't have much of a frame of reference. And it does do a good job of balancing, you know, you're never really missing one or the other, or really unclear on what's going on in one or the other. However, it does mean that Asgard has to be toned down in scope. It almost seems like there's about half a dozen gods in all of Asgard. That's about all we really see that there's, like, you know, focus on, but I, don't know, I guess it you know, it's either that or show this massive group of gods that never do anything in Clash of the Titans. The gods have awesome powers, and this film does a really great job of making these people still be threatened. That's quite impressive. There is a bit of main vague antagonist, or not so much personified antagonist in the ice giants of Jotunheim. And these are a pretty good villain. Even if they do look like, you know, the giant from 300 fell into blue paint. Now, the, the action tends to be quite good, but the best of it, I would say, is up front. It's really early on. It never quite reaches that level again. And also, for some reason, I think it might be to hide the fact that I have a feeling that Thor's fighting is done by a stunt performer. When he fights mano a mano, it's really awkwardly shot and edited. I'm not entirely sure what that's what else that could be, but maybe I'm wrong. The acting is good, but not great. Again, I'd say Hopkins and I think Middleton or Middleton, something like that, Loki, 
Those are great performances. Those really stand out. Asgard itself is a an awe-inspiring inspiring sight, and it really manages to be incredibly epic. And the three really helps here. You really feel like you are in another realm. The basic story is a lot like a classic adventure tale, and this really works well. This, it really works to the film's benefit, and it gives it more gravitas, because otherwise it wouldn't be quite as strong, what with the kind of meh characters, and likewise acting. And since it's revealed pretty early on, and it's in the trailer, the blandly named Destroyer is just as bland in everything else. The day after the day of the day the Earth was still cold, it wants Gort back, okay? I'm sorry, you have all of Norse mythology at your fingertips, and the best thing you can come up, come up with is a shiny robot with halitosis. Come on. All in all, it's a fun film. Not entirely sure it's... some people are really hyping it up. Not entirely sure it's all that, but it's fun, and, you know, just take it for what it is. And it sets up pretty nicely, both a Thor sequel, Ath, well, Ath, The Avengers.